This is the historic town of Keith. Keith first appears on the charter of William the Lion, in 1195, giving the barony powers to punish, hang or drown convicted criminals. Keith derives from the Gallic word meaning wind or pure air. Fortiter and Suaviter, boldly and gently, appears on the town's coat of arms and was the motto of the Ogilvy family who built the 15th century castle of Milton. The three constituent parts of the town are Old Keith, New Keith and Fife Keith. The River Isla provides a clue to the history of the old town. As the river was easily forded, in the 8th century a typical Dark Ages settlement developed of mud, stone and wattle houses. Around this time the followers of the Celtic monk Saint Maruva arrived bringing Christianity to the indigenous pagan Picts. They named their early Celtic church Kilmaroof in memory of Maruva. Over the centuries, St. Moruva has become St. Rufus, and throughout Keith, this name is widely used. The Kirk of Keith, dating from 1120, seen here with added tower in 1569. Outside the Kirk, in 1650, the defeatist royalist Marquis of Montrose was forced to attend a divine service at which he was vilified by the Protestant minister. Montrose, maintaining his dignity, is reputed to have retorted, Rail on Rabshake, or in other words, Rant on, Commander in Chief. The Edendiach Mortifier School, erected in 1648 beside the Kirk, was Keith's first purpose-built school. Alexander Ogilvy, a native of Keith and writer to the signet of Edinburgh, mortified the Kirklands of Edendiach for the building and sustaining of a school and schoolmaster. The Kirk's graveyard became the children's playground. In 1609, local dignitaries, Thomas Murray and his wife, Janet Lindsay, had this packhorse bridge built over the River Ford. 
The old brig, as it's known locally, is synonymous with Keith and truly a part of the town's heritage. In 1706, Daniel Defoe crossed the bridge, declaring it a very fine bridge. And of the folk, he described them as merry people. The bridge still stands a witness to 400 years of Keith's history. In 1667, Peter Roy MacGregor, a freebooter, held Keith to ransom. MacGregor lost his hand in a fierce skirmish as he was captured by the local lairds and he was duly sentenced to death in Edinburgh. During the Simmery Fair of 1700, another freebooter, James Macpherson, was captured and imprisoned in this jail next to the inn which originally stood behind these cemetery gates. Under the gallows tree, Macpherson danced and sang and offered his fiddle to the onlookers. With no one accepting, he broke his fiddle, tossing it into his own grave. Robert Burns immortalised the event. Si rantingly, si wantingly, si dauntily gaed he, he played a spring and danced a rund below the gallows tree. Wild times indeed, but wilder times were ahead. In 1746, an army of Hanoverian soldiers, made up of mainly Campbell militia, were encamped along the riverbank by the school and kirk. Under cover of darkness, the waiting Jacobites surprised the sleeping Campbells and a fierce battle took place. Those who managed to escape took refuge under this large stone covering a hollow below the old brig. To this day, it's still known as Campbell's Hole. The massacred Campbells were buried in a communal grave alongside the kirk, becoming known as Campbell's Hillock. This is one of the last Jacobite battles to take place immediately before their savage defeat at Culloden. Under this road bridge, and well before it was built in 1770, there was a rock or scaur at the edge of a deep pool known as Gorn's Pot. Here the barbaric practice of drowning witches took place. And yes, the incident of the man pushing the drowning witch back into the pool has been well documented. Needless to say, this practice was stopped in 1738. Ancient Simmery Fair was said to be the greatest in Scotland, where merchants and traders in horses and black cattle flocked annually. People came from far and near to sell their wares from these blind arches or crems. This Simmery Fair was the catalyst for the founding of New Keith and, in 1750, the Earl of Findlater laid out plans for this on high ground above Old Keith. A typical mid-18th century planned town, Keith comprised a distinctive gridiron plan around a central square and was one of the earliest post-1745 towns. To this day, the core of the new town remains the same. In 
Read Haven Square in 1830, looking west. The chapel without its dome. The same period looking east, with jail and school in the background. Looking west, around about 1900. Looking east, about the same time. Reedhaven Square with its flagpole and fountain. The square in the 1960s. And finally, Reedhaven Square in the 21st century, complete with modern roundabout. This was the very first street of New Keith, named Old Road and later changed to Mid Street. Greggs of Keith has been here for almost 100 years. At first it comprised four separate shops selling different goods. This year 2004, its doors closed for the very last time, the end of an era for Greggs of Keith. The Gordon Arms Hotel established in 1751, being the first hotel of New Keith. It was rebuilt in 1823. Later it became the Banff County Library. Destroyed by fire, it was demolished, then rebuilt by E.W. Sports, the present occupier. The grocer shop and the one-time Seafield Hotel now are converted into flats and an insurance broker's business. The Plough Inn hostelry carries some colourful murals of picturesque Strathyla distillery and the old Clydesdale horse and plough. Annan's Inn, now the commercial hotel, it still has the unusual lacy crown on the rooftop. Post office of 1912 with the telephone exchange on the upper floor is a thing of the past. The telephone exchange was modernised and the post office has become the main sorting office for parcels and letters. This is a plan of the proposed institute. Today the clock tower of the Institute dominates the municipal buildings. At one time it housed the library, a reading room, a billiard room, a courtroom, two lecture halls, a museum and a cafe. Today it's Murray Council's access point. Down the lane behind the Institute is the home of the Scottish Tartans Museum. Where you can wander through 300 years of Scottish history and view over 700 tartans. You can also learn about historic Scotsmen and women and find out if your family have a tartan. Take a look at the intriguing Buttercup Dairy Company tiles. The Buttercup Dairy was a very popular organisation in its day. Next door was Keith's first cinema, the Picture Palace. 
It was used during World War II as a canteen for service personnel, closing in 1938 when the more modern Playhouse Cinema opened. Now occupied and trading under the business of Robert Henry and Sons auctioneers, it's a very popular venue for antique auctions. Once the scene of a very busy smiddy around 1850, witness the changes by 1903, substantial to say the least. And today, 2004, it's still a thriving business. At the other end of Mid Street stood another smiddy. It's now Keith Resource Centre. Mid Street has an excellent reputation as a shopping centre, where most of the specialist shops can be found. And you come away with a feeling of belonging and a sense of community. Union Street, originally named Cross Street, crosses three streets as do many lanes in Keith. These lanes link four parallel streets which form the heart of New Keith, giving it the typical gridiron formation. In this lane is Keith Community Radio, staffed by volunteers. The programmes are varied, with the emphasis on Scottish music and language, a touch of local colour on local radio. The original name of this street was Kirkhill Row, now Land Street. This house, Stella Maris, or Star of the Sea, for a time was the home of author, journalist and broadcaster James Nochte. This was once the home of the late Dr Robert Turner, who motivated the building of Keith's local hospital. Unusual in this area, a stone house with a brick dressing. Chapel House, the roof is capped by an iron star with curious detail. Behind this house, the Reverend John Wesley built his Methodist Chapel in 1776. The Skinner's Inn. In the past, the stopping place for the Royal Mail and meeting place of the Domestic Friendly Society. Not many granite-faced houses in Keith, but this is a particularly attractive example. A baker's van of the past carrying out door-to-door -door delivery. and houses said to be of an American design. Wide, spacious Moss Street of the past, with time to stand and stare. Today, busy Moss Street on the main A96 route is exactly halfway between the oil capital of Aberdeen and the highland capital of Inverness. A view of Moss Street with Caird's Hill or Hill of Friends on the skyline. One of Keith's nicely decorated houses. This garage has a bit of history attached to it. During the 1920s, Jim Goodall, a native of Keith, built and flew an airplane named the Flying Flea. A tremendous achievement at the time. Perhaps history is repeating itself, as one of our citizens, Darren Williams, was recognised recently for his business achievements. Balloch Road, originally Back Street, named after the hill overlooking the roadway. 
The Royal British Legion Clubhouse, built between 1967 and 1968, still flourishes. Kynath Park, Keith Football Club grounds, named after its benefactor and the home of the Keith football team, known locally as the Maroons. At the end of the street was once the flourishing Seafield Mills. Ballach Road merges into Westerton Road with the Alexander Simpson Memorial Park. Simpson, a native of Fife Keith, set up his trust to be used for the benefit of sport in the district. No town would be complete without its school and Keith's first school in 1648 was the Edendiech School. It stood right next to the Kirk. Here's the school of 1819 having moved to the upper floor of the toll booth or jail in New Keith's Square. Keith Public School of 1833 built like the first school next to the Kirk. The school became Keith Grammar School. A tower was added with on top a statue of Minerva, Roman goddess of wisdom. In the early 19th century, Keith had 19 unregulated dame or adventure schools, but no real government schools. The first primary school was built in 1864 and named Green School. Funded by public subscription and benefactor Robert Green, today it's Keith junior primary school, plus a nursery school. Keith Senior Primary School, dubbed for many years as the New School, was hurriedly opened in 1939 because of the outbreak of World War II. And as the years rolled by, with lack of space, it was necessary to erect these Medway extensions which still exist to this day. A new modern replacement school has been planned for 2006. It will have a large expanse of land laid out as playing fields with a picturesque backdrop of the Knock Hill behind. On the same campus stands the 1965 Keith Grammar School, a replacement for the old grammar school which demolished in 1975. The site of the former Keith Grammar School, which stood between 1833 and 1965, has been developed and is now a tree-lined cul-de-sac of private houses. As a result of the introduction of the Education Act of 1872 and the growth of population, a new school was needed. The Fife Keith Infant School was opened in 1875 and it closed in the late 1960s, reopening as Ogilvy Special School. And today it's home to Cubs, Scouts, Brownies and Guides. St Thomas Roman Catholic School was built in 1867 on a site near the church which is its namesake. The old school was demolished and this modern purpose-built school replaced it in 1970. Today it's still a primary school. Keith New Police Station was built with accommodation for police and their families. Today these houses are administration offices for the police force. Old Nick sits on the rooftop, although for quite a number of years he disappeared and then reappeared just as mysteriously. By the police station is the Keith Turner Memorial Hospital and Health Centre. 
In 1877, on the initiative of the much-respected Dr. Turner, a fund was set up for the building of a hospital. A site was given by the Earl of Seafield and the hospital opened in 1880. In 1893, the Kynach Awards were presented by George Kynach of Isla Bank. Today, the busy cottage hospital has been completely refurbished and attached is the Keith Health Centre. Opposite the police station and the hospital sits St Rufus Church Hall, built in memory of Mary Percival Kynach. It was erected for the Young Women's Christian Association as a patriotic club during World War I. St Thomas Roman Catholic Chapel, with its frontage in Roman Doric style, was begun in 1830. By 1837 the chapel had a belfry and statues of St Peter and St Paul. These statues were removed in 1957. The majestic landmark Copper Dome was added in 1916 and then replaced in 1966. Statues of St Thomas and St John Ogilvy adorn the chapel front. The beautiful Baroque interior is enhanced by the altarpiece, a painting by François Dubois, presented to the chapel by Emperor Charles X of France. The dome interior is filled with images of the night sky. And glorious stained glass windows are illuminated at night. The small chapel is a memorial to St John Ogilvy, born at Drum in Keith and canonised in 1976 in Rome. He was a close relative of the Ogilvy family from Castle of Milton in Keith. Keith North Church an elegant Elizabethan-style edifice opened in 1845, just after the disruption, and became known locally as the Free Church. It has been a Church of Scotland since 1929. Inside the church, magnificent stained glass windows grace the walls. Trinity Church had its foundations laid in 1882 by Mrs. Gordon Duff of Dremure Castle. A tapestry of the Last Supper sits below a stained glass window. chair on which in Aberdeen in 1784 the first bishop of the American Episcopalian Church was consecrated and a new religious movement began. This church soars upwards to a height of 120 feet. Built 
between 1816 and 1819 in a neo-perpendicular Gothic style with a commanding clock and bell tower. The King's Colours of the Sixth Gordon Highlanders The battle honours of the Sixth Gordon Highlanders are laid up in this church. The Earl of Seafield's coat of arms graced the gallery. Sacrament House, or Ombury, from around 1495 was rescued from Keith Medieval Kirk and sadly inserted upside down. In front of the church, the Matthew Stewart Memorial Garden and Cairn. Stewart was the minister of St Rufus and later moderator of the General Assembly. St Rufus Gardens with bandstand. A view from the church tower, St Rufus Park laid out recently as a modern adventure playground complete with original wood carving. Scott's Craig Gardens, opposite the War Memorials, opened in 1973 and was laid out on this site where the Keith Gasometer and Gasworks stood, which was begun around 1838 and then finally closed in 1968. The long-established Royal Hotel recently was tastefully refurbished to modern standards. Yugi House Hotel recently expanded and refurbished to a high standard. Originally a doctor's home and a surgery, it then became Keith's first health centre. And now it's a large spacious hotel. The central garage proprietor has preserved this unique milestone with places such as Fockerbers and Aberdeen measured in miles, furlongs and yards. He stands in silence in the rain and thinks so long did friends a Flanders poppy in his breast, his back new in his teens. Ye yeah, can see the battlefields, for all his comrades fail, a scene of death and agony, a tale he lived to tell. The bugle blows its last post, it fades a wa say low, he bids farewell to all friends, far he left them long ago. Keith War Memorials and Garden of Remembrance. There are three memorials. They were unveiled on the 11th of November Armistice Day in 1923 by the Duke of Richmond and Gordon. The borough and parish memorial is in the shape of an altar with four bronze tablets bearing the names of those who fell in World Wars I and II. A striking bronze statue proudly marks the memorial to the Gordon Highlanders. A local soldier was the model for this statue, which stands sentinel over this outstanding memorial. Another plaque in the Garden of Remembrance is in memory of those who fell in more recent conflicts. The award-winning garden is maintained by Murray Council and the memorials by the Keith Royal British Legion.
James Duff, Earl of Fife, founded Fife Keith in 1817. It was originally to have been named Waterloo. Where Tesco stands was the slaughterhouse, an auction mart for animals and the houses of Mary Place. Earl's Mount House in the foreground was built in 1867. It became a hospital during World War I, and then it was Bampshire Education Offices, and now, once more, privately owned. Gateway to Fife Keith, the Union Bridge of 1770, that original bridge has now been widened and strengthened. And that was done around about 1912. And it's on the main road, of course, between Inverness and Aberdeen. This corner doorway is on the site of the Sutriol Inn and one-time Briggy's Bar and today is Keith Natural Health Clinic. The imposing Georgian building was one of the first to be built on the wide and spacious Regent Street in Fife Keith. It was the home of the Duke of Fife's Factor and became an inn, council offices, post office and part became a shop, a TV Taylor's Emporium. The green Fife Keith flag flutters in the breeze. Regent Square is being given a facelift with floral displays and many other improvements by this group. Two hotels flank Regent Square. On one side the Fife Arms Hotel and on the other side the Grampian Hotel, once known as the Gordon Arms. The Maldiri Hill overlooking Fife Keith, scene of some glorious sunsets. There's a pleasant nature walk through the cottage woods seen here behind Fife Keith. The Central Bampshire Auction Mart Company of 1903, which incorporated a slaughterhouse. The mart was important in this agricultural area, animals were sold and the carcasses sent by train to the London markets. All this of course has been replaced by, guess what, a supermarket. Directly opposite in Hyde Park stood for Scythe Tannery and it stood there for nearly 300 years. Railways brought prosperity to Keith. Earls Mill Station, later renamed Keith Town Station, opened in 1856 and then closed in 1968. Running at weekends, it was reopened in 2002 by volunteers from the Keith and Dufton Railway Association. Keith Junction was opened in 1858, a very busy railhead with engine and goods sheds, marshalling yard, bookshop and hotel. Today, trains still stop here between Aberdeen and Inverness. In 1788, George Kynach purchased the Bleach Greens and created Isla Bank Mills, 
a mainstay of Keith's economy for over 200 years. Isla Bank is now a complex of industrial units occupied by the Isla Mills, a kilt making school and many other businesses. Isla Bank House wants a home to the Kainich family. Robert Laidlaw began his Rothy May woolen mill in 1882. It became a thriving business and moved to Keith in 1901, where it lasted for more than a hundred years. In time it was renamed Laidlaw Seafield Mills. The son of the last owner is now Lord Irvin Laidlaw of Rothy May. and this was the family home. Strathmill Distillery, originally named Glen Isla, opened in 1895 It's owned by the world leading drink company Diageo, with its whisky forming part of the J&B Rare Blend. In 1786, Strath Isla Distillery began operations as Milton Distillery. Then William Longmore, benefactor of Keith, purchased it in 1830, and in time it was sold to Shivers Brothers and renamed Strath Isla Distillery. Shivers Brothers designed the distillery front with its water wheel and twin pagodas. There is a splendid visitor centre and sales facility. The distillery at the present time is owned by world acclaimed Perno Ricar. This aquavitae or water of life in time will be transformed into the golden nectar of Chivas Regal, one of the world's best known whiskies. Lynn House owned and used by Chivas Brothers for corporate hospitality. Folklore and legend surround these picturesque falls of Lynn. Beside the falls, the old mill of 1818 is now Glen Keith Distillery. the remains of the castle of Milton. Shivers Brothers have recently repaired and preserved the exterior. Volunteers from the Keith and Dufton Railway Association run the line between the two whisky towns of Keith 
and Dufton. Leaving Keith Town Station. Now at Dremure Station. Arriving at Mile Long Loch Park. The High Fiddich Viaduct. Dufton Station and its carriage buffet service. Traditional Music and Song Association Keith Festival is a weekend of competitions in music, song, Doric poetry and storytelling in the traditional style. Impromptu music sessions in pubs and open air are normal practice, weather permitting of course. Church of Scotland's two kirks hold popular services. Entertainment is provided for the hospital, residential homes and sheltered housing. Doric speaker Robbie Shepherd in full flow. An innovation this year was a play by the Wood U Street Theatre Group in Dunny Duff. This is quite near to the popular Falls of Tarnash, and one of the many beautiful nature walks around Keith.
Simmery Fair was the forerunner to the Great Keith Show. Today, in the 21st century, it's been renamed the Keith Country Show and is still organised by the Central Bampshire Farmers Club. WRI Craft Marquee. Not all animals are live. Industrial Marquee showing the art of spinning. Keith Kiltmaker showing her skill and dexterity. Another industry, wood turning on a lathe. Traditional craft of barrel making, very impressive and difficult. Nimble and fleet of foot these young dancers in competition. A magnificent show, the grand parade of prize-winning livestock. Massed pipe bands of Strathyla, Dufton, Towie, Huntley, RAF Lossiemouth and Elgin Pipe Band. Something to stir the sternest heart. On the way to Reedhaven Square, where in the past the Simmer Eve took place, now, during the Keith Country show, it's become a fairground attraction. New Mill is the starting point for a whistle-stop tour through the outlying areas around Keith. Ben Rinnis, Ben Egan, TV mast on Not More, seen from Boham. In Grange, Nether Mills and King Memorial Hall. Neolithic stones in Rothy May. Memorial to astronomer James Ferguson, FRS. St Fumac's Well. An All Abilities Nature Walk. Drumure Castle built in 1848. Loch Park Adventure Centre. Dufton, spiritual capital. On the Malt Whiskey Trail. Thirteenth-century Balvini Castle, home of Black Common, the Earl of Buchan. Stacked barrels at the Craigellachy Cooperage Centre. Charleston of Abelard, home of the world-famous shortbread. The Craigellachy Bridge spans the River Spey and was designed in 1814 by Thomas Telford. Music 
world famous traditional foods at Baxter's of Fokkerberth. Spey Bay Wildlife Centre, a wonderful environmental area for bird and dolphin watching. Port Gordon, dating from 1797. Bucky, once a leading port with its fishing fleet and shipbuilding industries. The Bucky Drifter tells the story of the herring fishing era. Findochti, or Finechti to the locals, tells us is just an honest historic village. Portnoki Floral Village sits high on the cliffs above its natural harbour. Bow Fiddle Rock Cullen Harbour and its unique townscape of viaducts. The well-known formation of the Three Kings. Port Soy Harbour, where the annual Scottish Boat Festival is held. In the old harbour buildings, craftsmen work the distinctive green and brown Port Soy marble. Huntley, capital of Strathbogie. Deans, famous for its shortbread. A noble ruin, Huntley Castle, ancient seat of the powerful Gordon family. Before leaving us, see Keith in a different light and listen to a Doric toast. Me I hae clays hop ye, fae the essen to the phone, baith meat and drink to stop ye, and a cosy shaky doon. Od a wall lock and danger, me I be as soon as a bell, and may your doctor be strange to your friends and to your cell.